So when you define a sequence or a property, you can define them with arguments, and there's various ways of doing this. This is the simplest way that we're going to talk about here. So we've defined a sequence here, sequence, and we've given it this name, and we've got parameters called N and P. So notice these aren't typed. Basically, what this ends up being is a text expansion here. So we define the behavior inside of here in terms of N or P. So we're using consecutive repetition, using N as a upper bound of a repeat count, consecutive repeat count, and P as the name of some expression. Okay. And in order to use that sequence, what we have to do is give it its name, of course. Uh, but being as it's got arguments, we have to pass arguments to it. So in this case, 10 will map to N and ACK will map to P. So if you can imagine what happens here is a text expansion now, once we instance this sequence, okay, and this is what we end up with here. So we end up with the sequence n cycle resp with the arguments 10 and ack coming out as this expression here, not ack 1 to 9, consecutive repetition, hash hash 1 ack. We can also nest these as well, so you can define one sequence in another in another, but I warn you that that's makes things very complicated to try and understand what's happening and debug them. So although you can do it in the language, I definitely would recommend against doing it. But parameterization at one level is, is perfectly fine. I, I do that all the time, but I'd very, I'd, I don't think I'd ever recommend doing two levels of this even. So properties can have a few more arguments than uh, sequences. So for example, the, the parameters can be events, for example, not just booleans. Uh, so what we've got here is a property definition and we've got start and, and result and stop as, as the arguments. We define behavior in terms of those and then we instance it. And when we instance it, we map right rec to start, three to and, act to result and cancel to stop. Okay, so what happens again? Because they're untyped and there's no direction on them, uh, this is the simplest form of doing this and it just becomes a text expansion which the tool will check the, the syntax after text expansion that it's legal code now notice in this case clock is not passed as an argument okay so this will work however so this is still legal syntax and it will still work as long as there is a signal in local scope named clk okay so this is a bad idea this is what's called side effects but we're just relying on that happening which is bad practice it, it makes things less reusable I would strongly recommend that if you're going to write a parameterized property that everything inside of here is passed as a parameter. You're not relying upon these local side effects, otherwise it'll give you reuse problems at some point in the future. So the kinds of things that we're, we're not going to discuss in this course, because this is an introduction to SVA. Uh, properties can have uh, different kinds of arguments than sequences, like events, and you, one of these arguments could be another property. So you, you define one property in terms of another, for example. Again, I'd recommend against that. that. That is not really of practical use, although you can do it. You're going to get bogged down with understanding whether it's working correctly or not and debugging it. Sequence and property arguments can de be defined as being typed and having a direction as well. Uh, there are lots of limitations on that as well. So what I'd recommend is if you Google search for this SVA local variables practical examples in the document you've got, just click on the link. It should work. Uh, if not, just Google search that term.